The third and final week of the preseason is here. A fourth exhibition game is a thing of the past. It's the Packers and the Dolphins coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, the final dress rehearsal, week three of the preseason. And we got a good matchup on tap as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Miami Dolphins. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis with you. And now we sit, CD, at week three of the preseason. And this is the one that the coaches probably think is pretty valuable, right? Certainly. This is the dress rehearsal. This is the one where your starters are going to play. You might even game plan a little bit more than you do with a normal preseason game. And then you've got to decide, do you bring them back after halftime and get them going again in the third quarter? one away out of the end zone comes Johnson and in hindsight probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16 yard line so here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense and they will be let out by their rookie quarterback I tell you what when he's on schedule for that week secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Ready. Again, it's A-Chan. And he's got some space here. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. 18 big yards on that one and a Miami first. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. It's a gain of 35. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. A give left side. Here's HM. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carry. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Ready. They come up to the line now, facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Off play action, Matthews. That is caught, and out of bounds all the way down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. Uh, it's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. Yeah. 
A terrific Ready. opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. Ready? Hey, champ. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. HN once more, and this time he'll score. Touchdown, Miami. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Will Lutz on for the point after. And that makes it 7 0 Dolphins. So that drive in total, eight plays. And the drive finished off with a touchdown run from Devon Achan. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And they will be led out by their 6'3 cornerback. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. From the gun on third down, Hankins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. On the counter, here's Algier. Breaks through the contact. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. A good chunk of those yards came after contact, and that's an area where he's really starting to excel as a running back. It felt like he was doing a drill that running backs have to perform all the time, especially in pads, called a gauntlet drill. Two guys, you know, people with these two rows, and you have to go right through the middle of them and make sure you take care of the football and knock people aside. He's performing the drill on that run. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. A read option, here's Algier. Had a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down Holding right after. Offense. So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you, and instinctively you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official and called. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. To throw on third down. Hankins. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. So Miami coming out for their second drive. This could end up being a pretty big drive. I mean, look, yes, it's early in this game, but they scored the touchdown. They got the stop. And now if they could get in the end zone here again, CD, they could grab an early stranglehold on this one. Yeah, they certainly can. And that's what you're looking for. Where's the advantage? 
Can you gain it? Can you press it? Now for them, finishing it off because right now it's out there for them. They've just got to go seize it. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it facing a second and long situation. Off the play fake, Matthews. Open man downfield is Ronald. He's got it. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. A game there of 30 big ones. Well, he worked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. So that play much needed there as they're all the way up near the 40 for a first and 10. Running left, HM. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. From the 43, here's second and five. HM here, they stay on the ground. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40 yard line. 41 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong, right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. A run straight ahead with HM. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay. I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Packers are going to take over here at their own 22-yard line. Now he's a high draft pick, so maybe a bit of a mulligan, but you never want to throw a preseason interception, especially as a rookie. No, but this is the time to do it, right? Let's, let's get the kinks out. He's still got to learn how to read coverages, still has to learn the entire offense, has to see how he fits with the players around him. The bottom line is what you said right in the beginning. He's a high draft pick. They want him on the field sooner rather than later. So let's keep giving him some reps and seeing what they have. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him 10 yards on the keeper, and it'll lead to a second down. And he's going to keep this again. And this will be a Packers first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down. It's a and the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skin the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly? Yeah. Meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them. They were on him in a hurry. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Back to throw. Hankins throwing the out route incomplete. That's Reed. It'll go as a gain of four. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. They need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, they moved the ball okay here in these first two drives, but this one's going to get them out to nothing. They've got to start dialing up some plays that allow them to finish drives with points. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Watch out for Hill on the return. On the ready. 
The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but... And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in for the Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You can see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is, when the pressure's on, can you throw a touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Alonso looked at the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Packers offense set to go. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. There goes a deep ball, end zone. Ah, oh, that is incomplete. I believe I'm following their logic. Take the big shot downfield, loosen things up. You're hoping to get some points on the board before the half. Maybe now you come back and throw some underneath stuff in order to make sure you get a completion. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 28. A good pick up there, a 22. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll look to throw again. Dumps this one off to Algier. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Again, he'll drop to throw. Looking left side, he's got it complete. So it's a gain of 12 there on the reception. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Back to throw again. Touchdown! Christian Watson from 19 yards away. And the Packers are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Out of the end zone comes Johnson. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Devon A. Chan in the offense ready to go once again. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football. And they've moved them out of the That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in for the Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill as the first half is winding down. And the Dolphins will extend their lead here just before halftime. 
is certainly a deflator right there defensively. Their guys just came off on a touchdown drive. They're back in the game, and then bam, they give up a touchdown one play later. How about that? And the momentum, which seemingly had shifted the other direction, thought we might be seeing a comeback. <laughs> that momentum right back the other way. But that is certainly not complimentary football that we saw right there. The defense is supposed to help their offense not give up another touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Packer offense heading back for one final first half drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Week three of the preseason is here. Everyone wrapping up their exhibition schedule. No games for the league on Labor Day weekend. And then it all begins. The 17-game regular season gets underway on the Thursday after Labor Day with the NFL kickoff game. In our game, expect to see the starters for at least one more drive. Something to look forward to as we get you back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Both of these coaching staff with some big decisions to make coming up as the preseason draws to a close. The second half is going to be filled with a lot of evaluation. And to bring it your way, we go back to Brandon Godden. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Packer offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start calling back, they've got to start putting more pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. To throw on second down, Hankins over the middle here. It's hauled in by Watson, and they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Algier now up the middle. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. As we surmise, Charles, most of the starting units still out there for this third quarter. First time this preseason that they played into the second half. And that's by design. Most of the time by this point of the preseason, you want them to go into the half, cool down, and then come back out and warm up to start the third quarter like you would a regular season game. That's exactly what they wanted to get done. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, Hankins dancing to his left. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. 46 yards rushing for him now to this point. This second and four. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. 
You know, last week I remember asking you what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason. Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon, that just go out and make plays. You kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be fourth down. On now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. And this is caught. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Fourth down, no problem. Just a ho-hum pickup of 14 to keep the offense on the field. And they were right in that gray area on the edge of long field goal range, maybe too short to punt it. So the defense probably was expecting this was a possibility. They should have been. And in most cases, what you do on defense is you go to what they call punt safe. In other words, you leave your defense on the field, prepare for them to possibly go for it, and then you just have a little bit different responsibility. Now, oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. And the Dolphins are going to take possession here as they've got it at their own four-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Now we get Tyreek Hill and the rest of the Miami offense back out there. Not a bad day at the office there. Maybe he would like the catch number to go up a little bit, but I think most guys would say two catches, two touchdowns. Eh, that's okay. I think if the catch number goes up, we start talking about the record books because at that pace, this type of efficiency, oh yeah, I think I'd throw it to him a little bit more often. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Running the ball can be a struggle in this part of the field. In fact, it's a perfect spot Here for defenders to pin their ears back and try and work up field, and they capture him for a loss. Hut, hut. To throw from his end zone, Matthews. That's into the hands of Ronald downfield. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 of the 34. on first and ten. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. And they're going to speed things up here. Right back to A-Chan on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, Turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. They'll try the left side. Nelson down at the 35. It'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On third down, it's Nelson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Boy, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. Well, we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. First throw now for the backup lock. And his throw here is incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second down, it's Nelson. And he tried to bounce 
force it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. That second down play nets a minus four. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is caught. It's Winslow. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Well, you've been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they like to go for two. Lock going to try and throw for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Thompson looking to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Vaughn. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now a throw here, hauled in. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. First target, first catch, and a first down. Thompson out of the shotgun here. That'll be dumped off to Vaughn, complete. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it's second down. Now Thompson. He finds his man, complete. It's Newman. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 33. Into the air again, Thompson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Vaughn. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Thompson to throw on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Thompson. His throw incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Thompson's throw taken in by Rucker, and the Packers are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Thompson now. to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. Thompson. He's got some room to operate. And he gets it all the way down to the three. This likely a must-have. Third and goal. Here's Thompson. Steps away to it. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown Packers. Skyler Thompson. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Packers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't kinda, feel right. Exactly. 
But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they can afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame, get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. And a loose football, and the Packers pick it up. There he goes, left side. You know, if this is the regular season partner, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. So the Packers down by 12. A little over a minute to go. Can they take advantage of the late carelessness? We'll see as they've got a first down. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. On second down now, it's Nelson. And he is going to have a Miami first down, and the Dolphins are going to win the football game. They'll keep it on the ground. Nelson, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Locke. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Locke off a of play action. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could That's be a first down. Well, they frustrated these receivers tonight, really held down the passing game, but there got the penalty. Fine line between aggressive, good coverage, and interference, and they crossed it on that play. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty, first and goal. Locke's going to sneak it. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second, and he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. The sneak successful from a yard out. And the Dolphins have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they like to go for two. They'll try and throw for it. And he's got it here for the two points, but there is a marker down, so we'll have to see what that's about. What's the deal, y'all? So they say he went out of bounds, came back in, then touched the football. Can't be the first guy to touch it when you come back in bounds. That's why the penalty goes against him. Have to know where you are on the field. Well, there you go. Just your everyday leading big and the onside kick it with the lead. And they got it. I mean, it worked, but interesting call. I think because they have such a margin, they feel a little bit bolder about what they're doing. And it's not only just to try and increase their lead, but that's their way of saying, we're in full control of this game, and we can kind of do what we want. There we go, set. A lot going to throw it here. 
He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Dolphins. A great effort there. 61 yards. As his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. And this win now going to look a little more lopsided on the scoreboard seating. And some may have run out the clock in that scenario, but they wanted to put their foot on the gas, get one more touchdown, and they did just that. Well, partner, I would say the traditional is not overly excited about that score. They'd like to see the game played a little bit differently. But what you can't argue with is their execution of that play because it played out exactly as it was drawn up. It almost would have been a shame not to finish with such a well-run play. And the touchdown apparently not enough. They want more, an onside kick. And this one's going to be covered up by the Packers' hands team. The well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Here's Thompson. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here the sack. Now it's third down. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And when you break it down, you know, this was just a thoroughly dominating performance. And I truly thought that we'd have a tight game coming into this. I think you felt the same way yeah. based on our conversation after the production meeting. But obviously not the case. And how about just how it broke open? You know, you just all of a sudden, whoosh, there it is.